Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Welcome to Carry On Handles and Straps. In this lecture, you will learn quick and easy ways to make strong, sturdy handles and straps that perfectly coordinate with your projects. You will also learn to add hardware, to attach the handles and straps to the bag, and to make an adjustable detachable strap. Handles and straps are an essential part of a bag, and depending on the size and use of the bag, can be made in a variety of styles. For example, simple folded fabric straps are used to close and carry this lightweight meshing around drawstring bag. This changing station has a sturdy wrist loop that mom or dad can use to carry the bag or clip onto a stroller. On this handy running with scissors, we attached a handle to the top of the bag for easy carrying. Bowl Me Over 2.0 features handles that can be cut to various lengths, short for carrying by hand or long for wearing over the shoulder. This Got Your Back 2.1 backpack may be carried two ways, on the back using adjustable back straps or by hand using a padded grab handle at the top. We also use padded handles to carry this in-control caddy. Hardware attached to the bag allows the handles to fall down out of the way when the caddy is being used. On this Ultimate Travel Bag, we attached quick grab handles as well as the option of an adjustable detachable carrying strap with a pad for comfortable over-the-shoulder or crossbody carrying. When I began making bags, I noticed that most bags had handles and straps made out of strapping or webbing, so I went shopping and spent way too much time trying to find strapping to match my fabrics. Even in a town with 10 fabric shops, I discovered that I could find black, white, navy, beige, and a few other neutrals, but if I wanted orange with purple polka dots to match my bag, I was out of luck. To solve that problem, I began to make my straps and handles using fabrics to match my project. However, I needed a way to strengthen and support those handles so that they would stand up to wear and tear. I developed several ways to accomplish that, and those are the techniques that I will share with you today. One simple method to make a handle involves just a bit of fusible interfacing and fabric. We use this method for smaller projects that will be used to carry lighter items. An advantage of this method is that there is no seam on the handle, so it looks good from both sides. The add-on video for our free pattern Peacekeeper explains how this is done. The first step is to fuse the handle interfacing to the inside of the handle. Then with right sides out, fold the interface handle in half to 2 by 12 and press to mark this center fold. Then open the piece and bring each of the raw edges into the pressed center line so they'll meet in the middle, making a, again a 2 by 12 inch piece. We'll then fold that piece in half again to create a 1 by 12 inch handle. You'll top stitch all around the sides of this, sewing an eighth of an inch from the edge. An edge stitch foot, such as the number 10 for the Bernina, makes this really easy. Note that we've left the ends of the handle raw, as they'll be hidden in the seam when the handle is attached to the bag. We use a similar technique to create the handles for in control and catch all caddy, except that we finish their ends and we use soft and stable rather than interfacing to provide some extra padding. Let's watch part of the add on video for catch all caddy to see the process. To begin, we are going to press it to create the finished shape. This will help us achieve a professional finish. So we'll start by turning under a quarter inch on each short end of the padded handle and pressing. Then with the right sides out, we're going to fold the piece in half lengthwise and press to mark the center. So you want to get your raw edges even on the long edges and press to mark that center line. Then open the fabric and bring each raw edge into the middle following that pressed center line, and we'll press again. I usually do these one at a time. So I'm going to press this side, then I'll turn it and press the other side. So now my raw edges will meet in the middle along that pressed line.
Then fold the handle in half lengthwise one last time and press. All right, now we're ready to insert the soft and stable into the handle to give it some nice padding. Open the handle and place the soft and stable below the pressed center line, positioning its short ends a quarter inch from the short ends of the fabric handle. So we want this end to be a quarter inch inside that end, and we want this end to be the same. For some reason, my soft and stable always seems, math-wise, it should fit, but it always seems a little bit long. So if yours is the same, just trim that little bit of extra off. Fold the bottom edge of fabric over the soft and stable, bringing the raw edge to the center fold. If your top opened up, bring the top raw edge back to the center fold too. Then fold the bottom half up, matching the folded edges, and pin or clip to hold the edges together all the way around. This encloses the soft and stable and all the raw edges. Once you've got that pinned in place, you're going to sew all the way around the handle, stitching an eighth of an inch from the edge. For that project, we then fold a portion of the handle over to make it more narrow. Each pattern will give complete instructions. We also use the folding method to make the drawstring straps for this meshing around. To make it easy to pull the straps through the casing at the top, we didn't include any stabilizer inside. Because these straps are narrow, we use a special tool to help with the folding process. Let's watch part of the add-on video for meshing around to learn how to use a bias tape maker to save your fingertips and make quick work of these straps. This step can be made significantly easier by using a 1 inch or 25 millimeter bias tape maker. With the right side down, we're going to insert it in the wide opening on the bias tape maker, which kind of looks like a U. Slide your fabric in, letting the sides curve up on the sides of the tool. Push it in as far as you can get it. At some point, you're going to have to use something to get it going through there. And I have found that a stiletto is the best because it's strong enough to really grab it. And you'll have to reach in on this end too and grab it some more. Get it pulled out and then make sure that this is all nice and smooth, that you don't have any folds here. Get that coming out the end, which presses your sides to the center. Get them even in the center. And then I like to just set my iron down right at the tip so that as I pull this out, it folds my edges in to the middle. When you get to the seam, I just keep pulling the bias tape maker, which is going to end up folding that seam over so that I get it pressed. And then after I get past that, I open the seam out. I have to give it a little bit of a tug to get it through that bulk. So get that like that and then open this piece. Fold your seam back over, refold these edges in, and repress that. And then you can just keep going all the way to the end, pressing all the way to the end. Once that's done, then you're going to fold this in piece in half and press it again. Isn't that an easy way to fold and press a narrow strap? Once it's pressed, you'll stitch around all four edges just as we did on the other straps. Now let's talk about the method we use most often, making a fabric tube into which we insert polypro strapping. We use this technique to make the handle on running with scissors, the wrist strap on the changing station, the handles on bow me over, the backpack straps on got your back, and the carrying strap on ultimate travel bag. It works well for so many uses. Our free carrying strap and pad pattern includes instructions to make adjustable detachable straps in both one inch and one and a half inch widths. The add-on video for that pattern includes lots of helpful tips, so let's watch part of that video now. The first step is to join the two pieces of fabric to make the strap the length desired. 
with right sides together, sew the two carrying strap pieces together on one short end with a half inch seam and press the seam open. We will sew this piece together to make a tube and then pull strapping into the tube to add strength. It's really annoying to have that strapping get caught on the seam when we do that step. So to avoid that and prevent the seam allowance from folding over and making a big bump when the strapping is pulled into the tube, we recommend that you stitch along the raw edge of the seam on each side. I sew about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Next, we will make the fabric tube. With right sides together, fold the carrying strap in half lengthwise, aligning the long raw edges and pin to hold. Stitch from one end to the other along the long edge with a nice full quarter inch seam, back stitching at each end. This seam is one that I've noticed some students struggling with, so let me give you some tips. The math for cutting these strips allows for about an eighth of an inch of wiggle room once the strap has been sewn together with an accurate quarter inch seam. Since the strapping has a bit of depth, that wiggle room makes it easy to pull the strapping into the fabric tube and have it lay flat when complete. Many quilters have been taught to sew a scant quarter inch seam, which makes a narrower seam allowance. This not only makes it harder to press the seam open, but often the fabric doesn't fully fill the fabric tube, which can cause premature wear. The loose fabric is also very likely to cause wrinkles in the finished strap. By the same token, most garment sewers are used to sewing half inch to 5 8 inch seams, so they end up with a seam allowance that is too big. That results in a fabric tube that is too narrow and makes it difficult to insert the strapping, or results in a finished strap that won't lay flat. Because we want to press this seam open to make the strap nice and flat, you really want your stitching to be even all the way down. Refining the seam isn't ideal for this step. So take your time as you sew and do your best to achieve a consistent quarter inch seam. Next we will press the seam open. This will ensure that the strap is nice and flat when assembled. You may be tempted to center the seam on the fabric tube, open it, and press. However, if you do that, you'll end up with sharp creases along each side, which will be difficult to get rid of when the tube is turned right side out. To avoid this, you can position the fabric tube with the seam at the top and press one side open at a time. An even easier method is to use a narrow pressing bar. I've made this bar using half round molding from the lumber store. We're working on development of a better tool for this. Be sure you're signed up for our email newsletters so we can let you know when it's available. Just insert the bar into the fabric tube and center the seam on the rounded side of the bar. Because the iron contacts only the top of the bar, we are able to press the seam open without pressing sharp creases on the sides of the fabric tube. Our next step is to turn the fabric tube right side out. There are a number of ways that you can do this. Let me show you our current favorite method. This method involves a turning tool. We suggest the quick turn tube turning tool, which has three sizes. The smallest size will turn tubes for spaghetti straps. The medium size will turn tubes for three quarter inch straps. We generally use the largest size. It works well for one inch or larger straps. For each size, there are two pieces, a plastic cylinder and a rod, which is either metal or wood. Begin by sliding the plastic cylinder into the fabric tube. Allow about two to three inches of fabric to extend beyond the end of the cylinder. The rod will push the fabric through the tube and it needs to maintain contact with the fabric all the way through. Otherwise, the rod will come out of the other end, but the fabric won't. So allowing that extra fabric to extend at the end is really important. Push the end of the fabric tube into the cylinder while sliding the fabric over the cylinder. Keep pushing and pulling until the entire tube has been turned right side out. Use the rod to push the remaining fabric out at the top and slide the cylinder out. 
Then center the seam in the middle on the back and give the strap another good pressing. Our next step is to insert the carrying strap stabilizer into the fabric tube. We've cut the stabilizer from PolyPro strapping. Again, using the right tool for the job makes this extra easy. We've tried all sorts of methods for this task, from safety pins to a variety of bodkins. So far, this little green bodkin is our very favorite. We love the strength of the clip that holds the strapping and its length and flexibility. Let me show you how it makes inserting strapping super easy. Begin by making sure that both ends of the PolyPro strapping are nice and even. When we finish the ends, we're going to fold the fabric against the ends of the strapping, so we want everything to be straight. Then just open the clip on the bodkin and insert one end of the strapping into the opening. Close the clip for a strong, secure hold. Insert the pointed end of the bodkin into the tube. I like to fold the edges of the strapping over the clip to make it easier to get the strapping into the tube. Then just push and pull on the bodkin, using it to feed the strapping through the tube. There is a small raised area on the pointed end of the bodkin that makes it easy to find and grab the bodkin as it moves through the fabric tube. Keep going until the bodkin comes out of the tube at the other end, bringing the strapping along with it. Then you can unclip the bodkin and set it aside until you're ready to make another strap. Easy, huh? Now just smooth the fabric over the strapping, being careful to keep the seam allowance centered on the back, and center the strapping within the tube. It's easy to make a strong and sturdy strap that will beautifully coordinate with your bag by pulling strapping into a fabric tube. Depending on how that reinforced piece will be attached to the bag, the ends may be left unfinished or they may be turned under. Any by any pattern will give you complete instructions for each piece. Here are some tabs that I made to attach the rectangle rings to a catch-all caddy. We don't want to turn the ends of these tabs under as they will be hidden in the bottom seam when the tabs are attached to the caddy. To avoid bulk in that bottom seam, we let the fabric extend about a half an inch beyond the strapping on each end. Our carrying strap, however, won't be attached to the bag, so we need to finish its ends before stitching along the edge of the strap. Let's return to the video to see how to do that. For this strap, we should have about a half an inch of fabric extending beyond the strapping on each end. A pair of hemostats is especially helpful for getting the strap adjusted to the perfect position. On this strap, both ends will be exposed, so we need to finish them by turning the fabric under. The easiest and least bulky way to do this is to turn the fabric to the inside of the tube. I prefer to first turn over the side without the seam. I turn it to the inside of the tube, folding it over the end of the strapping. Because we trimmed the end of the strapping nice and straight, it will be easy to get this nice and straight too. Then I turn the other side of the fabric to the inside of the tube. Use a stiletto to get everything lined up and even. Finally, top stitch all around the strap, sewing about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Again, this is a step that is made much easier by using the right tool. In this case, that tool is an edge stitch foot. I'm sewing on a Bernina, so I'm using the Bernina number 10 edge stitch foot. Check with your dealer to determine which foot will work for your machine. This foot may also be called a stitch in the ditch foot. The beauty of this foot is that it has a bar to guide the strap and room to move the needle to get a perfectly placed stitch. I move my needle all the way to the left, align the strap with the guide on the foot, and I'm ready to go. I usually start on the short side and go all the way around the strap in a clockwise direction, pivoting at each corner and locking my threads at each end. To make this strap adjustable and detachable, we'll attach some hardware. Now we're ready to attach the hardware to make the strap adjustable and detachable. We'll first attach the wide mouth slider. Position the slider with its right or curved side up. 
With the seamed side of the strap down, insert one end of the strap into one of the openings of the slider, coming up from the bottom. We'll call this opening A. Then go over the middle post and down through the other opening, which we'll call opening B. Then with the seamed sides together, fold the strap over onto itself. Align the finished end along the line marked on the seamed side. Then we'll sew these together, sewing an X within a box for added strength. I find it easiest to put my needle down in the strap about a half inch or so from the end of the strap. This allows me to put the presser foot down to hold the strap in place so that I can use my hands to get things lined up perfectly. I stitch along the previous line of stitching to the line that is marked on the unseamed side of the strap. Then I pivot and stitch across the marked line, pivot and stitch back to the bottom of the finished end, and pivot and stitch across the strap, making a box. From this corner, we'll stitch a diagonal line to the opposite corner on the top of the box. Then we'll stitch back across the upper line to the other side of the strap. We'll finish the X by stitching another diagonal line to the bottom corner of the box. Finally, we will pivot and stitch off the end, locking our stitches. Next, insert the free end of the strap into the opening of one of the swivel hooks, so that when the strap is folded over, the seamed sides are together. Note that this swivel hook will not be sewn in place. It needs to move as you adjust the length of the strap. With the seamed sides of the strap together, bring the free end of the strap back through opening B of the slider from the bottom. Go over the post and down through opening A. Then take the free end of the strap through the opening in the other swivel hook. Fold the strap over with the seam sides together and align the finished end along the marked line. Just as before, sew the end to the strap sewing an X within a box for added strength. As you've seen, it's really quite easy to make custom handles and straps for your bag. Note that by any patterns that include handles and straps will include complete instructions for each piece, along with helpful tags for labeling the pieces as you cut. This makes it so much easier when it's time to prepare and attach the components, as you'll know exactly which pieces are to be used for each. Let's talk next about the various ways we use to attach handles and straps to our projects. On these Peacekeeper and Easy Does It bags, our handles are just sewn in place along the outer edges. Their raw edges will be hidden in the outside seams. We used a similar method to attach the handle to Grab Some Grub 2.0 and I'll drink to that. In each case, the handles are wider than the bag, so they lift up in the middle, making them easy to grab. We stitched the handles in place with an X to strengthen the stitching. We use this strengthening technique often, and we'll cover it soon. To give some extra stability to this running with scissors, we attached a handle stabilizer beneath the handle. This stabilizer prevents the case from bending as it is carried. The straps on our Back At Ya and Got Your Back backpacks are attached to the bag at the top. Then we run the straps through wide mouth sliders and rectangle rings attached to tabs at the bottom to make them adjustable. Here's how those handles are attached. With the seam side of the strap down and the right side of one of the one inch wide mouth sliders up, insert the free end of the strap into one opening on the slider, coming up from the bottom. We will call this opening A. Go over the middle post and down through the second opening, which we will call opening B. Make sure that the seamed side of the strap is against the post, so your unseamed side is up. Now we will attach the strap to the strap tab at the bottom of the backpack on the same side. So take the free end of the strap through the opening in the rectangle ring at the top of the strap tab from the outside of the ring. We're going to pull our slider up towards the top. 
Then bring the strap back up toward the top of the bag and go through the wide mouth slider again, going into the slider from the back under the strap and first through opening A, which is the hole closest to the top, and then through opening B. If you insert the strap part way into that opening and then pull on the strap, it will pull it through the opening. You'll now have two layers of strapping going through the slider and the seams will be hidden on the inside. Pull enough of the strap out so that you can fold the strap over onto itself about two and a half inches. Then sew across the end to secure, stitching a reinforced box with an X for strength. When I do this, I like to start stitching out here, putting my needle into the strap so that I can get everything nice and even here. Then I'll stitch down about an inch, I'll stitch across, I'll stitch down here, I'll pivot and stitch across, which creates a one inch box. Then I'll stitch from this point to this corner diagonally, come back across this line, and stitch across this line diagonally, and finish stitching off the strap out here. Rectangle rings and sliders are also used to attach the adjustable handles for divide and conquer and round trip duffel. These handles are attached to handle tabs to make units which are then attached to the front and back of the bag. We use a similar method for catch-all caddy and in control to attach their padded handles to rectangle rings on tabs. One advantage of this method is that the handles can be replaced if they show wear and tear. This method also allows the handles to fall flat against the side of the bag, getting them out of the way. To attach the handle units to a project, we begin by marking placement lines on the bag. This ensures that the handles are aligned properly on each side of the bag. Let's watch the process in this video for Divide and Conquer. We'll begin by marking placement lines. Just follow the instructions in the pattern to mark horizontal and vertical lines for the placement of the handles and pockets. Then we can attach the handle units to the bag front and back. We're going to take our handle unit and position it with the marked side up to the inside of the marked vertical lines. And you'll do the same thing on the front and back. And we want to, I like to pin this in place, but I found that sometimes the pins distort it a little bit. So usually what I do is maybe put one pin or a wonder clip at the bottom. And then when I get to the machine, I um, position it along the line. So when I get to my sewing machine to sew this, I'm going to first sew across here, then I'm going to go up this side to this line, stitch across, come down to this line, stitch across, do my X, and come back down. Rather than having pins in here which make it move, I'm going to watch this marked line right here, and I'm just going to kind of pull on this to keep it taut and I'm going to hold it straight along that line and stitch as I go. So we'll get both of those stitched in place. Sometimes pockets are attached over the handles, such as on Divide and Conquer, A Place for Everything 2.0, and Case in Point. Other times, handles are attached over pockets to cover raw edges, as on Round Trip Duffel and our ever-popular Ultimate Travel Bag 2.0. On Bon Voyage and Totally Trendy Totes 2, a bottom border covers the bottom raw edges of the handles and the front pocket. All Biani patterns will give complete instructions for attaching the pieces in the proper order to guarantee perfect results. Many of our bags include the option of attaching an adjustable detachable carrying strap. For that option, we need to attach rings to the bag to which the strap can be clipped. We prefer to use triangle rings or D-rings on these tabs. We especially like the triangle rings because they keep the hook centered right in the middle. 
There are a variety of ways to do this. On Ultimate Travel Bag 2.0 and Round Trip Duffel, carrying strap tabs are attached to each side of the bag. Their raw edges are covered by pockets attached to the side. Let's watch the steps in the add-on video for Round Trip Duffel. So you've already marked some lines on each end, and they were marked in from the end and then up from the side from that marked line to the end. The purpose of these lines is for aligning the pocket and the carrying strap tabs. So we've got our carrying strap tabs that we prepared earlier, and they also have lines marked on them, and we've got our side pockets ready to go. So we're going to begin by positioning our carrying strap tabs because they are sewn on and then our pocket gets sewn on to cover the raw edges at the bottom of the seam. So you're going to position it so it's along the marked line. Be careful when you mark that line because I have found that sometimes my marker adds a little bit to it and if I line this right up next to that line, grab my ruler, then my stitches aren't exactly, or then my it's not exactly even. So right now that's three and a quarter from the side, but on this side it's only three and an eighth from the side. So I'm just gonna scoot that a tad this way so that it's ready to go. And then you pretty much have to put pins in to hold this in place until you get it stitched. So you're lining the raw edge along the line you marked down from the end, and you're lining the side edge along the line over here, and then get that pinned in place, and then we'll go stitch that. We're ready to attach our carrying strap tabs. I've put in thread that matches the thread that I used when I did that on top, and in bottom I have a thread that matches my bottom, because these stitches will be visible on the underside, so you may not want to have as dark a thread as you do on top if you're using colors like I have. So we're going to start at the bottom of the carrying strap tab and we're going to stitch all the way up. We've got a couple lines marked on here. We're going to stitch to the top marked line. We'll pivot and stitch across it. We'll pivot and stitch down to the second marked line go across it, and then we're going to do a little X in here, which strengthens that seam and makes it really sturdy, and then we'll go back down that side and across the bottom. So follow along with me. You wanna make sure that you're keeping your strap nice and lined up on the sides, so kinda of get your fingers in there and make it smooth. Hold it in place as you need to, and we're ready to go. So we're going to stitch right along the previous line of stitching so this is as unobtrusive as possible. As I start getting towards the end, I usually end up taking this pin out because sometimes the pins distort it a little bit. And then I use my finger on here to pull this so that I get it nice and, and tight. And then I don't have wrinkles in my strap. So I'm going up to the furthest marked line. And it's marked so that when I turn, my foot shouldn't run into, I, one more stitch. My foot shouldn't run into my hardware up here at all. So yeah, I've got plenty of room still. We want to leave enough room here. We don't want to go all the way up here because when we go to sew our side seams, we want to get this out of the way. This gives us a little bit more room to push it away so it's not in our way there. So again, get your sides nice and even. And this time we're going to stitch to this marked line. Pivot and stitch across that. And your other side, you may have to just roll it up to fit under your machine on this stage. Once we get to this side, we're going to turn at a 45 degree angle and we're going to stitch to here. You could mark that, but I find that if I keep my eye on this point, it's really easy to just stitch a straight line across there. So I usually keep, keep this tip of my stiletto there to use as a guide. Then we'll stitch it back across the top line, which again gives us some extra strength there. Then we'll again do the 45 angle going back to this point. And then we'll just go down the other edge along the previous line of stitching and across the bottom.
we've got our carrying strap a tab attached and now it's time to add our side pocket so we're going to take our side pocket and put it face down so right side down right sides together on top of our side strip and we're going to align it along the line that we marked that we used for attaching the carrying strap so there's a line going all the way across here and we'll just align it right below that line and then I usually use some wonder clips to hold it in place it would be hard to put pins in here and they move it so I find that wonder clips along each side work really well and again don't forget that your wonder clips have a flat side which is the bottom so make sure you're putting them on with the flat side below then we're going to sew a quarter inch seam across here and fold it up I've got one already attached on the other end so I can show you how that works so here our carrying strap is attached we've positioned our pocket along the line we've sewn across it with a quarter inch seam then you'll fold it up and we'll stitch it in place and we're going to stitch an eighth of an inch on each side so that when we assemble our bag those lines are sewn but across the bottom we want to stitch a quarter up a quarter inch up from the fold because then when that's stitched down our raw edges here will all be hidden on our take a stand bags the carrying strap tabs are attached on the right side on both the front and back of the bag their raw edges and most of the strap are covered by pockets. On our tools of the trade portfolios, rings are added to each handle as the handles are stitched in place. The stitching is well reinforced so that a strap can be clipped in place. As you can see, there are many ways to make and attach handles and straps. I hope you've enjoyed learning how easy it is to make strong and sturdy straps that coordinate beautifully with your projects. Don't forget that our free Carrying Strap and Pad, Peacekeeper, and Call Me videos and patterns all include great tips for making handles and straps. We can't wait to see the projects that you make, so be sure to share pictures with us. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube by using at Patterns by Annie. You may also email pictures to us at marketing at Thanks so much for watching. Happy stitching!